All right, welcome. I'm going to go over uh, fused deposition modeling, FDM. All right, you start with uh, an STL file or an object file. And this file could have come from a 3D scan or a 3D CAD model. Anyway, whichever it comes from, it's imported into the into slicing software, such as Prusa Slicer. And then it gets uh, sliced. And each one of these layers that you can see here is it comes from a uh, material that is in a filament form, so kind of like a, a plastic wire, and it is uh, on a spool. It gets extruded in through a heated nozzle, and that uh, nozzle moves around this build plate in the XY uh, position, and uh, it, it puts down each layer, layer by layer. And it builds it up from the from the build plate. All right. So how uh, uh, an object is made is it, it starts with uh, an infill, a solid infill, and this is a what's known as a horizontal shell and a bottom layer. All right. So it typically prints these um, on angles. These this this infill, the solid infill, show, shown in purple. So on this layer, it's, you know, plus 45 degrees. And then on the next layer, it goes negative 45 degrees. And then it's trying to achieve, you know, homogeneous strength by doing that. All right. And it also consists of these perimeter shells. So this is what makes the outside of the part. And so in orange, we have an external perimeter. And then uh, shown in yellow, we have an internal perimeter shell or just maybe what's known as a perimeter shell. Uh, also shown in green here are supports. All right, so we'll see how the supports work in a moment. All right, so as you can imagine, you know, the, the nozzle has to follow each one of these paths really densely uh, in this purple region, which makes up the bottom shell. Um, and that would take a lot of time to print up like this, print the whole thing solid. So what's implemented is what's known as infill, and that's shown in red. This infill structure is hollow, um, as you can see. It's really there to provide structure for some of these top layers um, or these perimeter layers, um, uh, you know, as it, it as it's building up, um, and uh, it provides strength to the part, and uh, it also lightens the part, so you're using less material, and it also reduces the print time. So uh, there are some cases where you use 100% infill. Uh, those would be specific cases, uh, you know, whether you need strength or you need density of the part. Uh, but very often you're trying to print in less time and uh, and and use less material. So that's how we that's how we do it. And you're still getting you know full you know pretty much full uh, coverage from your perimeter shells. Now you can see these uh, supports starting to support this overhang right here, uh, this overhanging material made up of this perimeter, you know, solid infill shown in purple, and the infill actually is also being supported by this green material uh, all the way from the build plate. All right, so, so that's the purpose of the supports, just to make sure that that doesn't sag So that gets built up like that, and uh, you can start to see that there's uh, some more purple in regions that's known as your top layers, um, and those provide a certain amount of thickness, um, you know, as it as it's being built from the top layer. All right, okay. So those are you know your basic structure. You have uh, you have your bottom shell shown in purple, your perimeters in orange and yellow, uh, your infill shown in red, and again, you know, you have some purple that are, that indicate your, um, your top layers, uh, as well as supports shown in green. And we can play around with all of these settings if we go to print settings, all right? So we have, you know, our vertical uh, shells, those are, our, those are our perimeters. 
um, you can change that value from two to three to four to five, however many perimeters you want. And you can change your solid layers, your, your horizontal shells. Those are your top and your bottom layers. All right. And you can also change those from, you know, four to five to six. And, you know, your bottom can be uh, a different amount too. All right. And you can also change your infill. You can change how dense your infill is, your fill density. That's usually based on a percentage and you can change your fill pattern. All right, so you're given a few different choices here. Um, I'm gonna just change it here to concentric just to show you a different, um, a different style and I'll slice it as well. So I'll press the slice now button and how that infill pattern has changed. And we're going to go into uh, uh, more depth in all of these features in, in upcoming videos.